Hello everyone, this is Helios Raven, I tell you how I do it, even if you don't care. And today in our Battlefleet Gothic special, we're going to talk about, we're going to have lesson three of how to play the game with the shooting phase. Before we actually go into the actual shooting at ships and such, let's talk about a few different things at first. The first is going to be shields. The way shields work is, is a shield represents how many hits the ship can absorb before it starts taking damage directly. Like, for example, this little firestorm here has one shield. This dictator class ship has three shields. So this little guy can take a total of one hit. It can ignore the first hit that's brought onto it. Whereas this one can ignore the first three hits on it. And what happens is, is basically, you would fire at the opponent and if, say, if you do, say, let's just say for argument's sake, this has a weapon that can do four shots at this guy, and it does, it, it, and it, do, and it damages it, hits it four times, sorry, hits it four times, the first three shots are absorbed by the shields, and the next shot hits the ship directly, taking, a, excuse me, taking away one of its hit points. Now, the shields are basically, now, when you represent a hit on a shield, what you use is what are called blast markers. Blast markers represent um, small clouds of debris and dust and small little explosions that happen, and a lot of them are in um, response to the shields absorbing damage. So let's say this vessel fires at the ship and does some d and hits it. Since it has three shields, the first attack is absorbed by the shields. And the object here is, hold on one second, the object is, is you want to take, you want to get, you have to place the blast marker in the direction that the, um, shield, that the, um, shield took the impact from. So, since this is in its front, since it's in front of it, we'd put the blast marker in front of it. Now, this ship now has one shield gone and has two more left. If it were hit three times you would place the blast markers touching and then the ship would have no more shields left any shot that goes to it would hit the ship directly you can't really stack them and do like that you have to line them out and if you're forced to move them into an arc that is not where they got the attack from then that's what you got to do but you want to try and get them as close into the same arc that the um, ship was hitting and also, when a ship is destroyed, you put a blast marker where it was. You put a blast marker where the ship was. Now, there are some other things with catastrophic rules where you may not be able to put down a blast marker, but we'll get into that later. But with basically, whenever an escort is destroyed, it's replaced by a blast marker to represent where it goes. Now, what blast markers also do is they, like I said, they represent how many shields that you have left, basically. They're basically a way to tally how many hits you've taken before your shields are no longer in use. And as long as your ship is touching these blast markers, they don't have those shields anymore. So, he has two shields, he's got one shield, he has no shield as long as he's touching these blast markers. The easiest way to get around that is is you move away from them you move away from them they no longer are affecting you and you have your shields back say if you have just enough room and you're still touching one you still lost that one shield blast markers also when moving through them a ship loses five centimeters off its speed it's not five centimeters per blast marker it's five centimeters total so he doesn't lose 10 for growing pet by here, he only loses 5. Now, a ship that doesn't have shields like the Eldar, or a ship who took the shield collapse um, catastrophic da um, critical damage, when they get in contact with the blast marker, they have to roll a d6. And on a roll of a 6, they take 1 point of damage. Now, this is, again, it's not 1d6 for each blast marker that they move through, it's 1d6 in general. And that is, and also blast markers obscure shots from weapon batteries and such, and they do have some special effects on ordnance, which we'll walk, talk into when we get into the ordnance phase. And that's basically it for the blast markers. And also, just one other note here is, this, in the shooting phase, that's when you would be allowed to do the, the command check for Brace for Impact. So, 
this dictator class is going to attack this guy. He's got no shields left, let's just say, for argument's sake. He has no shields left. Now is his chance to do the Brace for Impact Special Order. And unless he has a really crummy leadership, this ship just passed it, and he gets the Brace for Impact Special Rule, which I will put down in the video description of this video here. And also, just one last thing before we get into actual shooting. When fire, when measuring distance, again, you measure from the stem of the ship to the stem of the ship, not the model to the model or the base to the base. It's always you measure from the stem to, to their stem, just like when you're moving, you move from the stem of the ship. And with that, let us go on with how we do our shooting phases. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is land shots. Land shots are basically direct fire weapons that cut through basically anything and hit the ships directly. Sorry about that, father's cooking. And so, with the land shot, what you do is first, there are, before I continue, I'm getting ahead of myself, there are a few steps in the shooting phase. First one is pick a chip, ship. Second one is check to see if there's any targets in range. Third, check to see which firing arc they're in and if there's any weapons in that firing arc that can be used. Fourth, fire at the ship. And fifth, pick another ship to attack. Now, like this says, you can measure out where, e where each ship is to prior, to, prior to attacking your, the, ve the vessel that you want to attack. So, we're going to first talk about lances, and this little firestorm here has two targets it can fire at. Checking range from it, it actually has checking range from it. This vessel is four, about 14 centimeters away, and this guy is 18 centimeters away. Now, there's this thing called target priority. You have to attack the closest ship first. That doesn't necessarily mean I can't attack this vessel, but before I do, I have to attack this one. If I don't want to attack this vessel at all, I would have to roll a leadership check. Let's say his command check is seven. And five, six, seven, I make the command check. I can attack this vessel if I want to, ignoring this one. If that check failed, I would then have to at least attack this vessel once. Now, the first thing is his lance shot is in the front arc, is in his front arc. So I have to place the bearing compass over him and make sure that this vessel is within the front arc of the vessel and drawing a line <coughs> there I could see that its base does touch its that its base does go through the firing arc of the ship so a land shot is you check its firepower slash strength this number indicates how many shots you get this one has a firepower strength of one so I get to fire one land shot when I fire my lances and so I roll at him lances need fours or better to hit and rolling and rolling I rolled a three so I miss so let's just say though for argument's sake it was a four since this has three shields I would then place a blast marker in the general direction that the shot came from and like we said before let's just say for argument's sake he's got three blast markers touching him that lance shot hits him, and he goes down from 8 hit points to 7 hit points. And that is basically how a lance shot works. And that is basically the general gist of how, a, how it all plays out. Now, let's just say for argument, now let's just go on with one thing. Ordnance. Ordnance is launched in the shooting phase. And so, and then it moves in the ordnance phase. So what you would do is you would launch your ordnance and you'd place them in the arc that they would be moving in since this one has the torpedo arc in the front it shoots in the front and so we place them there same thing with fighters you'd place them in the direction that they'd be going with from the direction that they're um, being launched from and then you just leave them there me and my friends usually place them before usually place them in the beginning just so we don't forget about them and so, after that, we can then move on, and we'll talk about first is the Nova Cannon. Okay, 
So now for this, we're using a battleship that is armed with a Nova Cannon. The way a Nova Cannon works is you first, you have a minimum range. You have to go between. You can go no further than 30 centimeters, no closer than 30 centimeters, and no farther than 150 centimeters. And what you would do is you would put on with it within a minimum of 30 centimeters. Now, I don't have enough room for video camera view wise, so we're gonna fake it, but just keep in mind you can only do a minimum of 30 centimeters as your max. And you place the template down anywhere within range on it, and I'm going to put it here. The te this template is actually on the back of the bearing compass, in case anyone is wondering. And so you place it there, you then look on your chart. If it's within 45 centimeters, you roll a scattered eye and 1d6. If it's um, 45 to 60 centimeters, you roll 2d6. If it's 60 centimeters to 150 centimeters, you roll 3d6. On a roll of a hit, the template remains the same. On a scatter location, it moves in that direction that many centimeters on the dice. And when you touch it, any vessel that is touched by the template takes one automatic point of damage and any other ship and ships whose um, ships whose bases goes under the hull of the Nova Cannon shot takes um, 1d6 um, hits of damage. Ordnance are instantly destroyed and like lances the blast markers do not affect the line of sight for the um, so you could have these blast markers here and nothing and this doesn't prevent the ship from firing the Nova Cannon. Also keep in mind like with target priority if the closest ship, if the closest ship in the range is not being touched by the Nova Cannon, then the ship that's firing it has to make a leadership check in order to fire the Nova Cannon beyond the closest ship's priority. If, for any example, the ship touches a spot that has no ships on it, so no ships get hit, you place it with a blast marker where the shot landed. And shields take the damage as normally, I believe, and... Then you, um, hold on one second. And also again, to make a stain, this th this template has to be with, um, outside, right past the 30 centimeter line edge, and under the 150 centimeter line edge, you can't do it where it's just, where half of it is covered, was half of it is past the 30 centimeter edge, the whole thing has to be past it. And it's a line of sight weapon, so you can't shoot through a planet or an asteroid field, which we'll get into later. The only thing you can technically shoot through that isn't obscured by it are blast markers and other ships. And so, and also you cannot hit, you, a friendly ship cannot be hit by the template as well. If there's a friendly ship that's going to be hit by the template, you gotta move the template somewhere else to um, compensate that you're not trying to hit your own vessels. And that is basically it for the Nova Cannon and the Lances. And sadly, I am running very close to my timeline, and as you guys know, I like to babble. I am going to end the video here, and we'll continue this another time. So, until then, this is Helios Raven, signing off.